Welcome back to part three. Now that our avatar loading code is working as intended, uh, we can move on and do some nice customization to make this uh, look a little bit nicer. So mainly what we want to do is add a couple of things. Uh, the first one will be to make this image round and we're going to put it inside a circle with a border. And the other thing that we are going to do is to add a gradient in the background so that uh, the avatar stands out a little bit more. So let's go into our build method here and we're going to customize our container as needed. So the first thing we're going to do is to create a new clip oval which is a special widget and all it does uh, is to just take whatever child it is given and, and wrap it within a, a circle shape. Uh, the next thing that we want to do, um, let's just save this and see how it looks. Uh, we can see already that the, there is a circle shape and so our avatar is being cropped. But obviously we haven't specified a border and we want that to be more prominent. So the way we're going to do that is that uh, inside our container object we can specify a decoration. And what we're going to have in here is to create a new thing called a box decoration. Now inside here we're going to need a few things. The first one is a shape. And we're going to say box shape dot um, circle in this case. The next thing we want is a border. So we're going to create a new border dot all. And this will have some interesting parameters as well inside. So a color, which we're going to use colors dot blue. And we also want to specify the border width, uh, which is, uh, for example, three points. Um, so this is enough to make our widget look a little bit better and we can see in fact that we have a nice border around it. Um, one thing that we have not yet used is the actual size that we specified from outside and if you remember in here we are passing this value inside the avatar so let's make sure that we use that as well. So the way to do that is to specify a width with widget dot size and the same for the height to make sure that it's the correct size both horizontally and vertically. If we reload, we now see that the widget uh, has taken the size that, that we wanted it to. And uh, we are almost done. The last thing that we really want to do here is to add a gradient. And so let's do that. So what we're gonna do is to specify a gradient, which is going to be of type linear gradient. And what we're going to do here is to specify a couple of things. First of all, we want to tell it what's the beginning uh, pointing space for the gradient. And this is specified as an alignment property, uh, which we'll call top center. And also the ending point, which is going to be alignment um, dot uh, bottom center. So this will make sure that the gradient, the gradient applies vertically. The other thing that we want to do is to specify an array of colors. And in our case, we're going to use colors that are transparent at the top and just a slight hint of uh, black at the bottom. So we're going to call it black 12. Okay, we are good. I think we are now ready to test our um, app once again. And we can see that we have a nice subtle gradient now being rendered uh, underneath the avatar image. So we have added quite a bit of customization to our avatar here and we used mostly the decoration property of our container. So that's something that is definitely worth knowing for your own uh, layouts and, and widgets. And um, we specified a shape to be a circle. We added a border, specified the color of the border and its own width. And, and we've been able to add a gradient as well. So these are all parameters that if you wanted to customize, you could just change yourself and if you wanted to even take it to the next level and make this reusable you could uh, say that some of these parameters are actually um, added from the outside so this is how you would build a very customizable avatar for the purposes of this demo i think we are we are kind of happy with, with what we have so we can move on to the next stage um, the last thing that we want to do for this demo is going to be to add a button right at the bottom here, uh, which we're going to use to clear the name that we added 
manually and this is going to be particularly useful if you were to run this on a real device where it's kind of really just easy to reach with your thumb if it's right at the bottom here so we're gonna do that next uh, so to do that we're going back to our avatar page and we're going to locate the array of children that we have created here um, and, and we have inserted inside this column over here and in order to add uh, a new um, widget, uh, in fact, a new button at the bottom, the next thing that we need to do is to add uh, a couple of extra widgets to our children array. So let's do that now. Uh, here we're going to say add all in the same way that we've done before. And here we're going to specify a new array. And what we're going to put in it uh, is going to be, uh, first of all, a new expanded uh, object and the reason why we want to do this is that because we have a vertical layout uh, in our uh, page here we have the form first then we have the avatar this label here and we want to leave some gap between the text and the button that we're going to insert so the way we can do that is to um, have an expanded widget in between and now we can try to add our new button. So first of all, let's wrap it inside a vertical padding in the same way that we've done before. And as a child, we're going to specify a new flat button. And this inside will have a, a child, which is going to be a text. Uh, we're going to call this button clear. We're going to give it a style uh, with a text style uh, of font size and we're going to say 24 that should be uh, big enough for us and we also need to pro provide a unpressed um, handler and this is going to be handled by a method that we call clear and we're going to implement in a second uh, so let's define it here and just make sure I get the right name here and now that we added our button, we can try to see if it uh, shows up correctly in the simulator. So as we reload, we can see now we have this clear button down here and, and we can tap on it. Um, before I move on, I actually wanted to say that this was meant to be at the bottom right corner down here. And so in order to position it in the way that we want, um, we can put this inside our row. So let's do that and the row object will take on a children array and inside here we are going to specify the things that we need uh, so that should actually work better for us and in order to specify the right alignment the way that we can do that is to say main axis alignment with main axis alignment dot end and that should actually do the trick for us um, so we can see that now the button is appeared in the right place, just as we wanted. So the next thing that we want to do is to make sure that when we actually tap on the clear button, the name in here is actually cleared and that we also get the focus on this text field so that we can type in a new name. So let's head over to the clear method uh, that we're defining here and we're going to add some code uh, saying final uh, form, which is form key dot current state um, and we can use this to say form dot reset hopefully uh, we should be able to see that when the button is tapped here now as you can see the name has cleared well it didn't happen automatically was to get the focus right on this field so that's what we want to be doing now in order to do that uh, we need to define a new thing uh, and this is called a focus node um, so let's create a focus node object and i'm gonna show you in a second how to use this so we created our focus node we now need to go down to the place where we define our input and that is going to be here and inside here we're going to say focus node is the one that we just created right so with this in place we can go back to our uh, clear method down here and we can tell flutter to focus on our text field 
The way we do that is to say a uh, focus scope dot of context, and we're going to request focus on our focus node. Let's try this out. So here I can type in a new name. Uh, which will load a new avatar, hopefully. If I tap now on the clear button, we can see that not only the text is clear, but the input is here as well. So I can then go and type another name and I can repeat this process over and over. Okay, so we have made it to the end of this tutorial. So congratulations for following up to this point. And um, in this tutorial, we have seen a few interesting things, uh, in particular, how to create a, an avatar generator for your Flutter apps. And this is something that you can use to personalize the experience for your users in, in the app. Um, we have learned how to use the future builder to load content asynchronously from the network. And this is also a very useful building blocks for, for a lot of Flutter applications. We have talked about forms and form validation and how to request the focus on a specific form field. And, and so we, we have covered a lot of ground. So I hope that you had fun uh, watching this video. If you have any questions on any of the material, please let me know. So thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next videos.